Welcome back everybody, my name is Gamma Trap, one word, and this is my free metal tutorial series. I cover a different type and texture of metal in each video, so make sure to watch them all for the most comprehensive understanding of the topic. Also, leaving a comment and then watching the next video in the line really tells YouTube that I'm doing a good job. So if you want to support my channel and encourage me to keep making these videos, that's one great way to do it. So thank you so much and let's get started. Okay, so this is going to be our more steel and, sh and shiny and, and brushed metal sphere. Uh, now, the video we just did before this was a iron sphere or a more opaque, less reflective metal sphere if you want to get down to like the grittiness of it because it'll work also for like copper and stuff like that uh so it's not very reflective but you know it has the basic fundamentals of metal and a little bit of reflectivity at the time and some different colors that's cool we just did that one and that one was this and this is an iron ball sort of like a cannonball in a sort of sense uh so we are going to use the same shape because it's a sphere right use the same shape boom just like that the way we did this, by the way, was we made a big old circle, we put it slightly lower, and then we just masked out, you'll see right here, we masked out a bit of the bottom. So now we're gonna make a new layer above it, make a clipping mask, and now we have our steel colors here. You'll notice up here, these are more cool colors. Iron, with the iron ball, we had uh, some warm colors involved because iron itself is kind of orange. Uh, so it'll have coal, you know, cool and warm colors for iron typically. With steel, we're not gonna have that much of that. For steel, it's gonna be mostly cool colors. Let's get started with the darker side. We're gonna take a nice soft brush. We're gonna give a basic kind of bluing to it. Let's get a dark blue. And we're gonna put it down at the bottom right because our light sources usually come from the top left to the bottom right in my tutorials specifically. You will be painting with your light sources in many different places. Fun fact, <laughs> uh, throughout your adventures as an artiste, um, but for the sake of this tutorial, the light source is coming from the top left to the bottom right. So the bottom right of our sphere is gonna be the darkest part, and I'm actually gonna get a darker blue, a near black, in fact, like a strong navy. I'm gonna add that to our color palette. There, good. Soft brush, and now we're gonna put a little bit more down there, yes, perfect. Okay, so when you have a piece of material with a good gradient, a good variation between lights and darks, it looks more rich, more more three dimension, more, more part of the space, you could say. So there will be a lot of dark and there will be very bright, because this is steel we're dealing with here. A very, very reflective material, like a piece of armor. Or, I don't know, whatever you're gonna find a reason for a steel a steel ball. Get a lighter up here, just like so. Now let's actually have our lightest uh, blue, exactly. Up here, I'm just gonna have a nice little reflective bit because it's gonna be reflecting off the environment a smidge and we're, it's always good to have like little reflective things in your environment so like if a person for example was standing actually this uses a completely different color here if a person was standing big brush let's go big brush, right here just checking out this really cool sphere this really cool metal ball just looking at it right the reflection of this guy will be like this, roughly, soft brush, and we'll have him kind of like up here, right? A little bit of this action. See him right there? What up? It's your boy. See? See how this works? See how it's working out? <laughs> Steel, polished metal, very reflective. Not the most reflective, not mirror reflective. So, let's see, it's very soft. And in fact, we can have a little more blue in there to make it a little more realistic, you could say. Uh, but it's pretty reflective. See what I mean? Got our little, little guy looking on. So let's just keep using that as sort of like a basis of imagination. So say we've got things around us, trees mayhap, you know, uh, in the environment. It's good if you're just painting to really consider, because this is sort of like a fish eye view. So if, if there were someone, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. So say, for example, there was someone right here and right here 
looking, you know, close to us, looking at this sphere. Fish eye lens. The way we would work, I'm sorry for your eyes, by the way. <laughs> it's not the most, you know, useful <laughs> color to use as reflections. But my point is, we would have, see with the grass, we'd have our little grass reflection layers down here because it'd be reflecting the pedestal. And then right behind the grass, we'd have our guys just looking in, going, what's this? What's going on here? Have you ever seen anything like that before? No. No, it's like a, it's like a ball of some kind. That a, it's like a spherical ball. What is that? I don't know. And they're just asking, they're talking amongst themselves, thinking, you know, oh, wow, it's crazy. So <laughs> this, is, this is how reflectivity on like a metal or a reflective sphere, like a bubble, uh, would work. It's very fisheye. How fisheye lenses work, it kind of, kind of warps everything in a circle. That's, that's just how this does. Okay, so you have to act like this is sort of a mirror but a, a, a ball mirror. <laughs> That's literally what we're doing here. So with that in mind, uh, it's good to have little variations in your reflections. So like if there's trees, you would probably have, you know, a couple of, a couple of these in your reflections. If, if you're indoors and there's a window, uh, whenever we're doing our light sources, we would probably have, let's have our first big light source real quick that we're gonna just keep. Very gentle, but big or large. Uh, say that's the sun, for example. But we would, if it was indoors, it would probably have like a little window here, you know? And you'd, you'd be able to see, you know, things in a reflective fisheye sort of sense. It, it's very, very interesting. I love, I love working with metal because specifically you get to really help tell the story of the environment that the metal's sitting in, you know, is, is the uh, is it is it outside? Is it is it in trees? Is it inside? Is there a forge? Can you have cool like fire stuff on the side? Very blurred, very blurred. That's very important. It's not a perfect one to one reflection. You notice with the two guys that were standing over here, when I reflected them, it was very blurry. You know, it was very fuzzy. It, it's not a, it's not one perfect little reflective spherical ball mirror. It was just kind of it reflected pretty much basic color but kind of blued because that's the main color we're working with here so if they're gonna have embers for example you would pretty much just do a light source if there was embers if there was if you're in a forge kind of area you would pretty much let's get a good ember color you would pretty much just do kind of like a uh, a light source just kind of hitting off like that you know don't 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 go crazy with the details you're not you're not actually drawing a mirror uh, that's that's next that's next episode. Don't be jumping the gun here. All right, you listen to me. <laughs> Sorry if I came off a little aggressive there. So you know, this is a more fuzzy kind of situation. It's it's reflective but not very reflective. It's kind of brushy. It's 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 got a little bit of grain to it. You know, it's nothing crazy. It's just it's just what is. Let's have a nice reflective bit there. Maybe have another light source over here, but very gentle, mayhaps. Just for kicks, because I like kicking. Steel ball, that's great. And remember, get our get our dark bit in there too. Don't forget, we like the the, the rich tones here. We want dark and we want light all in the same device, all in the same material, if at all possible, because it makes it look really cool. <laughs> and that's it, that's that's the secret sauce. <laughs> wow. Well, dude, that's it. I just gotta make it look cool. Yeah, that's it. This is stylized stuff, we're making stylized things here. It's the rule of cool. There's literally one of the rules I have is the rule of cool. And the rule of cool, by the way, for those who are newish here, uh, it means it doesn't necessarily have to make sense as long as it looks cool. If it looks cool, you know, giraffes can walk on their heads. You know, it could just do whatever as long as it looks cool. And that's super subjective. I know it's not necessarily very helpful, uh, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, all right? 
you can get away with a lot of stuff, a lot of craziness in this industry of ours. As long as, you know, you make it look cool. Like that's the main point. Let's keep this here. Let's make a new layer, make it clipping mask again, but we're gonna go hard brush here. Now it's fun to very gently with the bright source kind of really give it the little 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 details. Little extra bits. We're essentially gonna be reblending this stuff with our hard brush. And change the size. And we're gonna be erasing this stuff later on, so don't like be too worried like, oh my god, you're ruining it! Relax, okay, relax. It's all part of the process. Give me a minute, alright? I'll explain it all. Let me hold your hand just a smidge, okay? We're literally just adding a little bit of brushing, okay? These see these lines? These lines? Very important stuff. With a brushed metal, that's the whole point. The way grindstones work in like a blacksmith sort of sense is in olden days they would have a literal stone <laughs> that they would pedal. Thanks like like it's like it's like Skyrim. I don't know why I had so much trouble getting that out. <laughs> Please send help. Uh, it's like Skyrim, you know? They would have they would have they would you, you literally have a grindstone. Other times they'd have they'd, they'd take the, the sword or the whatever and they would like hold it and scrape it manually across, you know, a, a, a whetstone or a file, depending on what era you're in. So you'll have these very gentle brushes. Now, <laughs> we can take the opacity up here. Watch the cursor coming up here, coming up here, top right. We take it, click it, drag it to the left. And we can just choose how opaque and how, how brushy we want this thing. Full max, full 100, cool, fine, great, looks nice. You know, zero, if you just want it all smooth and shiny and polishy, great, also, okay. But, you know, we want a little bit of texture in here. So I'm cool with about, you know, an easy 70, what is that, 78. <laughs> Doesn't bother me. It's what it's, you know, it's cool. That's the whole point, that's the whole process. So that's, that's essentially that. That's the brushed texture with a little bit of grindstone to it, you know? The iron we had had like little hammer marks. This one's got a little, you know, excuse the sound effect. <laughs> and you can even add a little extra blue on this if you want to. So let's actually do that real quick. So to color pick, what I'm doing here is you'll see this eyedropper tool. I'm in my brush, right? See it right there, brush is selected. And this is in Photoshop, by the way. Everything has its own color picker or eyedropper tool, every program. If you don't know what yours is and you prefer like Krita or Procreate or whatever, ask in the comments down below. And people, if you know, please be helpful because I know you're all very so helpful. Go ahead and answer questions if you don't mind. It would save me time and save me effort so I can keep making these videos. I always love answering questions, but sometimes like they'll slip through the cracks. I'm so sorry that happens, but it happens sometimes. So forgive me. Uh, with Procreate forever, however, uh, you could just tap on the screen somewhere, hold it there, and it'll pop up with a color wheel and you just drag and let go of wherever you want the color and that's the color you're painting with. For Photoshop, <clears throat> while brush is selected, you can hold down Alt or Option if you're on a Mac and you can then have the same color wheel picker. And then you can paint with that color you just selected. And that is when I blend. It's my favorite method of blending, uh, just using the color picker, because I've already pretty much got all the colors I need, and they blend together pretty cool. And then with this one, I would usually just like paint the grass and stuff around it, and then a cool shadow, and then the uh, extra credit, but I literally already did that with the iron ball, so I, I already have that all here, baby. Boom. <laughs> uh, it's the same shape, so I was like, ah, why not, right? Uh, but if you want to see how I did the grass and all that stuff, then it's in the Iron Sphere video. Either way, thank you so much for watching. Uh, very, very glad you're here. Thank you. So it's very lonely Very, <laughs> if you're not here. If you don't show up, I'm like, man, dang it. But, <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you liked it, a dislike if you dislike it. Subscribe to see more. 
Uh, thank you so much to my amazing patrons. I appreciate the ever loving out of you for supporting the ever loving out of me, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.